Physicist Sean Carroll has disproved the existence of life after death. At least, that's what a spate of publications, mostly based in the United Kingdom, would have you believe. In fact, it's almost an exact replay of what happened a few months earlier when a spate of publications, again mostly based in the United Kingdom, ran with a story saying science popularizer Brian Cox had disproven the existence of ghosts. Make no mistake, Sean Carroll's argument and Brian Cox's argument are the same cheap product in different packaging. What both are arguing for is metaphysical naturalism simply by assuming metaphysical naturalism. But even this is a misdirection. After all, what's metaphysical naturalism to the average reader of the UK gutter press who'd rather be reading pressing news about, say, Cara del Toro's bulging boobs? No, what they're really going after is the big kahuna. God. Of course, the British press is more than willing to indulge these men's puerile attempts at philosophy, since it's the objective of the British press as well to propagandize the bovine populace into atheism by any intellectually dishonest means necessary, and if statistics about religious beliefs of Brits are any indication, they've been pretty successful. The argument against ghosts and the argument against the afterlife are equally facile, and for the exact same reason. Sure, the avatars of public atheism will take the necessary implications of naturalism and break it up into little chunks to make it seem as if the concept of the supernatural is suffering a multi-pronged attack, but all their arguments amount to is the restatement of the singular question-begging assertion that is metaphysical naturalism. So let's have a look at what the Daily Express has to say about Sean Carroll. Sean Carroll, a cosmologist and physics professor at the California Institute of Technology, believes he has put the debate surrounding the afterlife to bed after extensively studying the laws of physics. Dr. Carroll states, The laws of physics underlying everyday life are completely understood, and everything happens within the realm of possibility. Okay, so right off the bat, can you, the viewer at home, tell me what's wrong with this? Can you figure out how Sean Carroll is already failing? Are you dumb? 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 Time's up. Here's the answer. Physics is the study of the natural material world, so it is not capable, by definition, of making any determinations about life after death, which is a supernatural and immaterial phenomenon. Also, the laws of physics underlying everyday life are completely understood? What a dogmatic anti-scientific declaration! Carroll is willing to close off the possibility of future discovery, he's willing to maim science itself just for a shot at disproving the supernatural, which wouldn't be disproved even if his statement were correct. Anyway, the article continues. He says that for there to be an afterlife, consciousness would need to be something that is entirely separated from our physical body, which it is not. Rather, consciousness at the very basic level is a series of atoms and electrons which essentially give us our mind. Again, more empty assertions. People who believe in life after death obviously don't believe consciousness is just atoms and electrons, so any argument with that as a premise is going to have zero persuasive force. In fact, there are powerful arguments as to why consciousness can't be reducible to material phenomena. Edward Fazer, for one, has written brilliantly on this subject, and links are provided under this video. Moving on. For example, all the photons in the universe are on one level, and all the electrons too have their own field, and for every other type of particle too. Dr. Carroll explains if life continued in some capacity after death, tests on the quantum field would have revealed spirit particles and spirit forces. Dr. Carroll writes in the Scientific American, If it's really nothing but atoms and the known forces, there is clearly no way for the soul to survive death. Well, that's a big if, Sean Carroll, and one that many of us are not convinced of. In fact, the only person I've heard even mention spirit particles is you. Continuing. Once this is accepted by all scientists, Dr. Carroll says, then they can truly begin to understand how the human mind operated. He said, There is no reason to be agnostic about ideas that are dramatically incompatible with everything we know about modern science. Belief in life after death can't be incompatible with scientific understanding, not even in principle. Sean Carroll is making a huge category error here. People who believe in life after death aren't making any unqualified assertions about science, but Sean Carroll is most definitely making unqualified assertions about philosophy. Now here's the kicker. Once we get over any reluctance to face reality on this issue, we can get down to the much more interesting questions of how human beings and consciousness really work. 
You know, you scratch a public atheist hard enough, you always uncover the same basic Stalinist compulsion to try to eradicate religion by hook or by crook. Of course, the easiest way is by scapegoating religion for everything that's wrong with the world, even if those things have nothing at all to do with religion. Sean Carroll, philosophy of mind researchers have been operating from the assumptions of philosophical naturalism for 60 years now, and their progress in solving problems like the fittingly titled hard problem of consciousness has been practically non-existent. In fact, the most public face of philosophy of mind, Daniel Dennett, has taken to trying to solve these problems by simply claiming consciousness doesn't exist. At this point, they're taking their ball and going home. So don't try to blame the hope and faith of good ordinary people for the professional failings of cognitive scientists and philosophy of mind researchers. By the way, have you noticed that Sean Carroll, Lawrence Krauss, and Sam Harris never make the popular press with actual scientific discoveries? Is it any wonder they'd prefer instant recognition for making glib pronouncements about religion and philosophy rather than toiling in obscurity to make incremental progress in actual science? Lucky for them, they have the support of a popular press eager to advance atheism and a community of atheists eager for validation. Taken together, they're a well-oiled machine perfect for the dumbing down of public discourse on religion and philosophy. Oh yes, and for you science popularizers who complain that the public don't trust scientists, here's a good first step for you guys to take. Stop bullshitting. <laughs> You are dumb. You are a loser. <laughs>